In this episode of another Zelda podcast, David invites Alyssa and Nick, two friends of the podcast, to build a top 10 emotional storylines list. Hello and welcome to another episode of Another Zelda Podcast. I am David Geisler, your co-host for tonight's episode, and I am without my co-host Kate May today. Today, I am with two very special guests, Alyssa and Nick. <laughs> hey guys! Hello! Hi! Hi! How's it going? Hi! So this is this this might this episode might even sound a little bit different because we're in a we're in my apartment here mm-hmm. in Chicago. It's a little echoey. This is not where we normally record the show. Normally, I go to Milwaukee, as uh, both of you know, and record with Kate. Yes. We, this is, this, I'm so excited about this episode. I feel like there was, like, fate was involved with this episode because um, we, we, I had a schedule snafu with getting to Milwaukee with Kate. We had a day and then there's availabilities and there wasn't. And we were able to move a few future episodes around. We have an upcoming Beyond Good and Evil episode coming up. And Kate and I will be recording that soon. But it left me with a hole, a little bit like with Shane a few months ago. Do you remember that episode? Right. Um, right. Where I met with him in Milwaukee and we talked about favorite ways to regain hearts. Yes. Anyway, I had this hole in the in the thing, and I really wasn't sure what to do. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I can't." I was Kate was really being great about it. We were like, "Maybe on a Tuesday morning, maybe on a Wednesday evening, we can get together and record something." Blah blah blah. So uh, we were just days away from needing to record this episode to keep the show on schedule, and I was at work, Alyssa. <laughs> yes. And if people recognize your name from season one at all, you are quote unquote Alyssa from work. Alyssa from work. Yes. So who are you actually? <laughs> I am Alyssa. <laughs> Very good. Um, just a Chicagoan who loves Zelda. So I had a great story to tell about you when uh, we became co-workers and I discovered that you enjoyed Zelda and you discovered uh, the podcast a little bit and we talked about you and you've had we've had some of your listener feedback on the show yes. and it's been a lot of fun. Yes, it's exciting to just be able to listen to a podcast that I can one relate to and enjoy listening to. So it was it was really crazy meeting you at work and I'm so being like about this. And being like, oh, I, you told me about your podcast. You showed me your, your thumbnail of yes. it. I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> that's, uh, that's David. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was cool. And I, I usually kind of keep tight-lipped a little bit at work about, about it. I mean, trying not to talk about it too much or anything. Mm-hmm. But if, if there's a co-Zelda experience, I can't help and not hold in and, and chat about it a little bit. Okay. So, anyway... Um, I'm going to get to you, Frank, and just, or Nick, Nick, in just a second. I know, it's Frank in my head now. Nick, I'm going to get to you in just a second, but I want to talk about like how this episode came together. I was uh, at work, and Alyssa, you and I hadn't seen each other in a while because of different schedules and things like that. Yep. And I said, oh, hi. And your phone went off. It did the, it did the Zelda riff. Yes. And it was like a sign from the goddesses, the Zelda goddesses. <laughs> my brain clicked, and I was like, I should ask Alyssa to do an episode with me. Yep. I was like, this is perfect. She's, she's familiar with the show. I'm sure we can find something to talk about. That very night, I'm at work, doing my job, and who walks up next to me but Nick over here. Oh. Now, Nick, let's let the audience know who you are a little bit. Uh, well, you go by Frankenstein. I've had yeah. you as Frankenstein as listener feedback on this show before. Yeah, uh, I go by Frankenstein. Um, uh, I'm actually probably new into Zelda. Oh, really? I probably started playing year, year and a half ago. Okay. Um, oh, no. Ex-girlfriend um, bought me a 3DS. I bought Ocarina because oh. I was watching her play. There it is. Uh, mm-hmm. I had a huge problem with Zelda before. Uh, that was because I needed a strategy guide and I was on the honor system. So Honor it, system of like, don't use the strategy yeah. guide? Yeah. And um, I was playing... Spirit Tracks or Phantom Hourglass? And Ooh. I got stuck at a part where you had to pick up a rock to throw it downhill at a lever. Yep. And when I f- looked at the strategy, got, I, didn't, I saw that, I just rage quit. I'm like, no, nope, I'm done. There's a few <laughs> moments in Phantom Hourglass where you have to solve puzzles that are not obvious in the game. They're kind of meta puzzles. Like some of that, like the closing, the clamshell is a famous one. Blowing on it is a famous one. There are a few in Phantom Hourglass that... There's even one real early on with a rat that some people have a really hard time with and it stops them just an hour in. But anyway, um, 
Nick, you and I got chatting about Zelda at work one night. I can't remember if you were purchasing something for Zelda or what. Hyrule Warriors. You were buying Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. Mm. And I couldn't, hold, I couldn't hold it in. I said, oh, <laughs> I love Zelda <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and therein lied our future because then um, Nick here started submitting listener feedback. I was excited to talk about that on the show before. So not only did I say like, okay, we'll do an episode with Alyssa. We'll figure out what it is that same night. Then Nick walks up and I was like, I have to take advantage of these coincidences. And the three of us need to get to together and do an episode. So I reached out to both of you yep. and then we decided what the topic would be. How did we decide that? Was it, it was kind of a culmination. We're going to do, today we're doing, as if people haven't seen in the title already, top 10 emotional storylines mm-hmm. in any Zelda franchise game or something like that. I can't remember how we came to that. We were texting a bit and I think I said, let's do a top 10. Yeah. You said let's do a top 10. I, I was thinking at one point of I hadn't seen you in a while, like you mentioned, because yeah. our schedule. But um, I know that before you'd asked, you had asked me, you know, any ideas, and I had thought about um, at one point telling you about either like top ten, like really sad stories. Yeah. So I kind of mentioned that, and um, I think then from that it snowballed into just emotional. I think you're lines. right. In fact, Nick uh, Alyssa is responsible for suggesting the Sidekicks episode, the third episode of season two, which yes, was a lot of fun. Yes, the Sidekicks episode. Yeah. yeah, we've got a lot of listener feedback from that one. People really enjoyed mm-hmm. it, so I was so happy that you thought about us to talk about that. That was another yeah. one that was like just pass her in the hallway and literally. Say, oh, work. we need another topic. <laughs> <laughs> literally, I'm trying to fix an aisle or something, and here he comes. He's like, I need, I, I have a question for you, and I'm just like, oh my god, he's asking me something for the podcast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we plan a lot of these episodes ahead. We yeah. actually have plans all the way up into like halfway through season three right now. Nice. But there's always a little bit of finagling and schedules and things will change. And sometimes mm-hmm. there's little holes that'll appear. And so I love on purpose, instead of not doing an episode, I love trying to take advantage of these weird little things. And sometimes they lean to some of some of our favorite episodes, you know, meeting up with Shane in Milwaukee was awesome. I'm so excited to be doing this with you guys. <laughs> so I think that's enough of our intro. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a classic AZP top 10 list here. Now there's three of us, so a little bit like the episode that Kate and I did with Lizzie, the top 10 shrine quests, I think, top 10 shrine quests. Each of us have brought three um, storylines, and a storyline could be a full story in a game, it could be a simple little story just connected to an NPC, just moments in the Zelda franchise that we think are really emotional. Yes. Now Nick, I actually, uh, before the show, off air before the show, we, I noticed that you, I think, brought a full top 10 list. Yeah. <laughs> you you overachieved and brought a full I, I top 10. I think I had uh, about 13. 13 of them? Yeah. Oh, and I was just like, well, I know I'm going to change my mind about some of these the day of. Yeah. So I was just like, well, let's just keep those three on there. I see. So, so you've whittled it down to at least three. And then we can do the others as honorable mentions. How about yeah. at the end? How about, all right? And we have tons of listener feedback. Um, I tweeted just a little, couple hours ago and we got a lot of great ideas back. So sometimes what we do is since three and three and three make nine, we'll like select our favorite listener feedback comment and have that be the 10th. This is all just silly, fun and games. It's just excuses to talk about cool Zelda stuff. But we're building a top 10 list. The definitive top 10 list. No, not at all. <laughs> all right. So let's see. Um, hmm. Would anybody like to go first? It means, I, I, you know what, how about this? I don't mind going first in that I'll then go last for the final round. So either of you will get the final, you know, the slot eight or nine or whatever. How about I go first? I'm going to, I'll, I'll go first and this is a simple one. So my first pick, so uh, I'll, again, I'll, I'll reiterate that our first picks, this is so silly that we make these rules, but it's like the, uh, the least effective, you know, we're going up in scale. Gotcha. All right, cool. Understood. So the, I picked this one. I almost considered not including it because I feel like it's, a lot of people will pick it. I think it's pretty standard, but I couldn't ignore it because it was my personal first moment of feeling emotions playing a Zelda game. Now, I had played um, Link's Awakening. I had played a little bit of the original. I dabbled with A Link to the Past, but in Ocarina of Time, as I'm sure is true for so many people, it's actually not leaving Saria, even though that's a super emotional moment. Yes. It's when the Deku tree dies, right in the beginning. Oh, I picked no. that as like number 10 here because that is... I remember that as a, my little 14-year-old David playing Ocarina of Time and the, you know, okay, the tree's talking to you, the tree's talking to you, and then he, you see a couple of leaves fall. The music stops. They do like a full stop with the audio and then the, that texture climbs up. Maybe you guys remember and he desaturates and then it's just quiet. Oh, that is really sad. It was like, I didn't, it wasn't like shed a tear, but I remember for that, for me playing that game, that was the first moment in the game where I was like, oh, I'm playing a 
I'm playing a story here. I'm playing like a real game here. Like, oh, this just got real. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit, you know? Yes. I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts about the Deku Tree's death? You know, I actually didn't think of that one when I was trying to rack my brain. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, because la- actually, I made this list last night. I was working on it a couple days ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, of course. Um, and I was just like, okay, the games that I'm really familiar with. What are some sad moments? Yeah. Deku Tree did not come to mind, and that's the one that kicks everything off, too. It does a little bit. And I, like I said, I almost considered not including it. I almost went with Saria or a few of the other moments in, in Ocarina there in the beginning. But I remembered, I, sometimes I will try to pick some of these as like personal moments. And for me, that was that first moment in probably any Nintendo 64 game at all, where mm-hmm. I had, when my heart fluttered for a second, you know, where you're like, oh, oh, oh this got real. Yeah. So a lot of fun. Now, there's other Deku Trees. I don't yes. think any others really die. Not in, uh, certainly not in Breath of the Wild. No. No. no I think no, um, we get a little yeah. Deku str- scrub right in the beginning of Majora's Mask, isn't that right? But that's not really a Deku tree death or anything. Mm. No. There is some. There's the Meku tree and a couple other Deku tree likes in the Oracle games, but they don't. They don't really die. They go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. But yeah, like legit in Ocarina of Time, he just literally perishes in front of Link. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a good one. That is a good one. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So let's see. Should we go clockwise or counterclockwise? Are you in the mood, Alyssa? I'm in the mood. Let's do it. <laughs> just because you said Deku Tree. Um, yeah. Mine comes from Majora's Mask. Yeah. And it's called the Deku Butler's Son. <gasps> yes. Yes. So imagine I'm preteen, a uh, mm-hmm. teenager. In my summers, well, what I do is play games. Majora's Mask was one I played a lot because it was hard. <laughs> right. Kicked my butt for a while. But in the beginning, when Link gets turned into a Deku scrub, mm-hmm. in the passageway to Termina, the parallel universe from Hyrule, he sees this, it's literally a Deku tree, a little Deku tree, but he's dead. He's just like a stiff little tree. Yeah, it's right in the beginning, isn't it? Right in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You don't think nothing about it. Until later on, <laughs> later you're you're, on, <laughs> I bump the mic constantly. It's okay. Later on, when you're you're doing the Deku Butler's quest of chasing him, and at the end you get a mask, um, or is it a mask? I don't remember. But, but he, it's one of those threads. It's yeah. one of those threads where he mentions, "Oh, this reminds me of when I used to race with my son. You remind me of my son in that way." Oof. Yeah, and then at the end of Majora's Mask, when everyone, when Link has saved everyone, there's like this happy sequence. But at the end, there's a very sad sequence where you see Deku Butler found his son and he's literally sitting there mourning the loss of his son because when freaking Skull Kid (laughs) turned Link into the Deku Scrub, the mask takes the soul of someone. It just happened to be the, the Deku Butler's son, yes. The mask takes the soul. When when he makes a mask yep. to turn Link or anyone into someone, you, he literally takes the soul and kills someone. So he killed the Deku Butler's son. So with the Goron and the Zora, they're kind of already dying, or the Goron kind of just died or whatever. Exactly. But I never thought about that with the yeah. Deku mask, that it had to come from something. Yeah, Majora's mask. Tree. Majora's mask. He, it's the most evil thing oh. honestly in my opinion so oh. that, that means mario's soul is in that mask mario's soul <laughs> yeah, right yeah, yeah Maybe. you're right if if the skull kid made it yeah but yeah it, it was one of those things where i was this little kid playing and at the end i realized that like i put two and two get to, together and i was yeah. just like oh my god <laughs> the deku butler's son is that little poor thing in the beginning oh yes it's, kind of, it's almost perished. in the credits isn't it like it's like at the mm-hmm. end of the game it's at the end credits yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone you're showing you're showing, showing everyone they're all like waving and being all jolly and then it gets really somber and it's the oh, deku man. butler just there doesn't, right. it, doesn't it actually the, the credits just end on that too i believe so yeah i haven't seen wow. it in a, in a bit in a minute <laughs> but i believe that's where it, it does end the credits where it's, it's like, like yeah he saved everyone but there's still some casualties it's like so you thought this was a happy ending but it's really not <laughs> <laughs> there's a yes. slight moment at the end of ocarina where there's a few people who are taking a moment because of like uh saria being gone and some of the sages are gone yeah. it's not but this is this is this is a hit this is a hit it is. Oy. It's like, whoa. <laughs> That's your first one? Where are we going? <laughs> We're going to be crying by the end of this episode. I want to know what your That's first one pick. is now. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I also picked some that are, it's just like, I really enjoyed the storyline. They're not all sad, okay? They're yeah. not all sad. Ooh, mine might be kind of No, my final one's complicated. Well, my, we'll my see. Next one's sad. 
Nick, what do we have for you? Now, you, um, had, you had to like whittle it down within five minutes here. So are you confident in your choices? Uh, yeah. Uh, I actually picked Mifa just in general. All right. Let's do it. Um, I just think her story is just extremely sad because it goes from her and Link being like the best of friends. And then as time rolls on, it seems like they're, I don't, I don't know if it was unrequited love. I believe it was. She's, she's definitely in love with him. He's, mm-hmm. She's in love with him, but it seemed like his attention went to Zelda. I think that's and the she acknowledged way of saying that. it. His attention mm-hmm. went to Zelda. His attention, yes. That's a great way of saying it, that's yeah. for sure. And then she... Spoilers. <laughs> it's okay. We, do, we basically do spoilers on this show. Yeah. Yes. Um, she does. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> along with all the other champions. But I think what's really sad is when you actually go to... Oh, I'm going to say Valley. Um... Zora's domain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You find the armor that she was making for you to be her husband. Yep. And it was custom fitted. And it's just like, I guess it leaves it open. Like, did, was it unrequited love? Because if that's the case, that's really heartbreaking. So what do you, when you say unrequited, what's the, what's the hang up there? What is the definitive aspect um, of that for you? It, she loved him, but the feelings weren't mutual. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. 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 You. I see. I see. Um, that's a good one. You know, it's hard to read mm-hmm. off of Link if... I think they do that intentionally, too, yeah. to have debates like this. But I remember that one of the cutscenes, and I, I, I was lucky the first time I played Breath of the Wild, and the way that I received the memories was in a, an incredibly dramatic way. I got her crying, fail scene, like only the second or third memory, so there was, I was like, what happened? Oh, my goodness. You know? And then I think I got like the, the, bor- the part where she's like, kind of boringly making him a knight. I got that way towards the end, and I think that's technically more towards the beginning of the storyline. So I received my memories in a very strange way, but Mifa was in the earlier part of, of, of getting a lot of those memories. And maybe, well, honestly, probably because some of those memories were technically connected with Va Rudo. Is that the elephant? Meadow's the bird. Ruda, Va Ruda. I say it wrong all the time, and the internet reminds me. I think it's Ruda. Let's keep going. <laughs> we're going to go with Ruda, and they can let me know if I'm wrong. Um... But yeah, there's a moment in there where you can tell just through her dialogue. You're kind of like, oh, are we going to do another um, Zora likes Link thing like in Ocarina? Are we going to kind of do that? And it doesn't happen. And then there's a few lines in there where you're like, again, it's the, oh, this is real moment. That's I remember the first time playing Breath of the Wild mm-hmm. and thinking, oh, they're going somewhere very nice and interesting with Mifa, even though it's a little bit of a rehash, but it's done with such more maturity and storytelling. I think it's great. And see, I was... Always Team Mifa over Zelda, because Zelda was a total brat in the beginning of that game, like the memories. It's true. I guess you could say that, yeah. yeah. Um, Mifa, yeah, there's a world where it's Mifa and Link together, I no. feel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a thing. Uh, let's see. But also another impressive thing about Mifa is that she kind of um, handles it, though, doesn't she? Yeah. You know, even in the Champion Ballad DLC and stuff like that, you can see that she, she gets it. And that's got to be, that's almost more heartbreaking. I never made the connection that she custom made that armor for him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because uh, if, well, if uh, once you actually unlock it, yeah. it, in the description it says uh, custom fitted, or yeah, custom fitted for uh, future husband. Oh. And so she was really, she had all of her eggs in the basket and then Zelda came along and just kind of blew it. Damn. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I really want to save her now? <laughs> Can I just go hang out? I guess. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, that's a great pick. That's a good one. I'm gonna good um, go to I'm gonna go to Skyward Sword for my second pick. Nice. And this one's this is a moment that happens right at the end. I have a very complicated relationship with Skyward Sword. I've spoken about it many times on the show. I want to love Skyward Sword. That's what I always say. I want to love it. I can't wait for the day where I can play it and I don't have to waggle a wee stick around. I truly mean that. Um, I was just about to ask, is it the motion controls? Unfortunately, it is. It is. And I, I've said this before on the show. I try not to be a grouch about motion controls in general. I try to be open about it. Back in the days of the Wii 10 years ago, I was like, that's right, lazy bones, get off the couch. I subscribe. <laughs> but ultimately, there's just they're not accurate enough that I can't, you know, it's hard to get on board. Um, I do think the motion controls on for Breath of, the, Breath of the Wild are like exactly the right way to use them, where you just use them to adjust your aiming a little bit, that kind of thing. I feel like that's a great way to use motion controls, but when you're... Using it to, f- to do everything in Skyward Sword. Okay, okay, I digress. Let's get off it. Um, I talked about it enough in season one. But um, Skyward Sword. Oh, also, I love the filters, the filters in Skyward Sword. But so, 
having it be in standard definition, and I'm also not a graphics snob, but in standard definition, there are times where it's just a little too blurry for my taste, and it's like, oh, this could be so beautiful. Anyways, uh, but, so emotionally, sometimes I'm a little bit removed from what's happening in Skyward Sword. There are a lot of times where I'm playing Skyward Sword, and I don't get as invested, because I feel like I'm just playing a a blurry painted Ocarina, 60, Ocarina 64. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of Zelda 64 right. when it was before the Ocarina of Time mm -hmm. um, version. However, I got to admit, towards the end of that game, when you start, when the story really starts planting itself, <laughs> starts planting itself at the end of the game, because it's really the story of all the games, and you have the Zelda situation, the Hylia situation. But for me, I picked when Fee says goodbye. Did you guys say Fee or Fi? I, I say, say fee. fee. I I've, always say been, fee. Fee. I've always heard fee. Okay, I'm going, mm -hmm. I'm going with it. Mm -hmm. Fee. When fee says goodbye, I love that moment. I love that moment so much. Are either of you particularly familiar? Yes. You're nodding a lot, Alyssa. I am. I am. I and can I speak agree. to it, but why don't you talk about it just a bit? No, I agree. It's because this, this, this bead who's kind of like robotic in the beginning, generally, it's basically at the end, does express some kind of like feelings that it's like I am. I actually... I, I did my purpose, but I am also like grateful to be part of it. Yeah. And they, I don't know, it's more like the fee became kind of like not human, just more emotional instead of robotic at the end. And she says something <laughs> along the lines of, I will prioritize the data I've collected of our time together as you know, the most special or something. I can't remember exactly how she puts it. Yeah. And it's her computer version of saying, I've, I've treasured these moments together. Exactly. They tre that was she's so treasured great. it and she's going to, yeah. it's like, I'm going to put this in a file because I need to keep this close to me. So it's like, that's a very human aspect for something that was so robotic in the beginning. I agree. And there's a bit of a trope in storytelling in general of like the robot that gets feelings. There's the data in Star Trek. There's, I mean, that's a thing. I get yeah. it. I get it. There's nothing wrong with that. Fee does fall into that a bit, mm -hmm. but it's part of the reason I love that, that scene so much. It is a scene because it's a cut scene. Mm -hmm. It's not gameplay. But part of the reason I love that scene so much is that they, they, the animators, did such a great job with Link when she's talking to him. Um, you know, everyone's pretty expressive in Skyward Sword. They took the expression engine from Twilight Princess and they really went further with it and built, kind of rebuilt it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, him, you can see in his face, him caring. Oh, oopsie, I just bumped the mic. <laughs> him caring about her journey. Uh, I, I don't know how to say this. He's not just like hearing her say her awkward thing. She's saying her awkward thing as best she can. It's the most emotional she can. Mm -hmm. But you see like um, a sense of calm come over Link or like a, a sense of rest in his emotions. I mean it, in his mm -hmm. expressions. And that's where that scene really lands for me. It's she's doing the best she can to explain her emotions. And then he, he understands. gets it. He understands, yeah, he gets it. And he's like, I... You're, you're, you're expressing yourself as best I can, and I also cherished it. To, yeah. I'm cherishing these memories also. Super cool. Super yeah. cool. So he says, and then, of course, you know, see, he says goodbye to a friend, and now, if we want to go large story, now we can pretend that Fee is, not pretend, but, you know, she's the sword for the rest of... Exactly. The rest of all things, yeah. and that's so all he's really literally, pretty. She's literally there, still mm -hmm. there forever, and she's we'll always have those. In sleep mode. Even in sleep mode. perhaps in Breath of the Wild, all the way through, I think yeah. we could probably deduce... For real, yeah. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't there a thing in Trial of the Sword where you hear Fee actually make a noise? I Yeah, I think there is. I, I'm not sure. The internet will tell us for sure. <laughs> but there's a moment in Trial of the Sword when you get to a certain point where the sword makes a noise and it's the same sound effect that Fee makes Ooh. in Skyward Sword, just to tie it all back around and together. Nice. So that was my second. I went with Fee. I thought it was great. Uh, I got a little choked up first time I saw it, to be honest. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of other things going on there, too, that also are putting you in the mood, so to speak. Yes. It's the Toy Story 3 effect. Like, <laughs> so Toy Story 3, the scene where Andy's giving the toys away at the end mm -hmm. wouldn't be as impactful if you didn't have the garbage disposal scene first or, yes. the, or the Inferno scene yes. or whatever it is. If those two were separate, they'd be emotional. But those, like that one-two punch, oh, by the time you get to him giving the toys to the little girl, it's like, I, I can't, can't even take it anymore. <laughs> it's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freak you out and make you super emotional. <laughs> Calm me down for just a second, but here's more emotion. And then lay it <laughs> down. Lay it down thick. Yeah, exactly. So that me, I mean, I'm not saying End of Skyward Sword is Toy Story 3, but uh, there was a lot of things going on there, so maybe I was in the mood. But anyway, that, that's my second pick. So, Alyssa, where are we at with you? Another Majora's Mask one. <laughs> just because, I mean, Majora's Mask is an overall very dramatic, yes. dramatic game. Yes. Um, so mine has to do with uh, Kremia and Romani from uh, Chateau Romani, which is yeah. an adult milk. They yeah. have their farm and their cows. And um, what got me with this when I was younger was the fact that um, after Link does the things to help them out, if he is successful, 
basically at the end, um, before the whole, before he saves them from the moon, mm-hmm. uh, Kremia, the older sister, tells her little sister Romani that, hey, I'm going to make you the Romani mask, which is like a cow hat that signifies that you're an adult. Okay. I'm going to let you drink some Chateau Romani, which is the adult milk. And I'm going to let you sleep in my bed tonight. Basically, Kremia knows the doom of the moon falling. And it's like, oh I'm going to make gosh. sure my sister lays with me then this night. And once doom comes upon us, we are sleeping peacefully. Jeez Louise. I very, was not particularly familiar with the storyline. Very dramatic. Yeah, because you have to be successful in, one, helping Romani keep the aliens, I call them. But right. it's the Poles trying to abduct the cows. Right. And then you have to help um, Kremia, the sister, deliver the milk Mm -hmm. from some random bandits who just want the milk, I guess. And if you if you're successful with those, then that that scene happens where she's talking to her sister. If you're unsuccessful with saving the cows, though. Yeah. Uh, Romani gets abducted and comes back and she is like messed up. <laughs> she's to be like, honest, that might have been what happened to me. Yeah, she's just <laughs> incoher- incoherent and at one point she's just sitting outside in the barn just on a crate and just like, huh, what? Who, who are you? It's This is sounding more familiar to me. Yeah, so if you're unsuccessful with saving the cows, that's what you get. And you don't really get that scene where Kremia and Romani are having that sister moment in the yeah. barn saying, yo, I'm going to... I'm going to make sure you're comfortable tonight because I love you and the moon's going to crash on us, but you don't really know that because you're too little and I'm not going to let you know, but you're going to be sleeping peacefully tonight. So that when I was younger, I was like, oh my God, this sister is basically saying, you know, yeah. The, this is doom and gloom and we're gonna we're gonna sleep through it don't worry we're gonna yeah. sleep through it so yeah that's... oh my goodness i can't <laughs> wait to try to experience that on our majora's mass playthrough next season do it yeah you just wait. have to make sure you get through the those tasks Save those cows. to get that yeah to I, get that i think the last time i really got to the cows was probably 10 or 15 years ago mm-hmm. and i kind of remember thinking i think i didn't give it enough respect i was like well this is some kind of mini game blah, 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 mm-hmm. fishing game or something and uh, I, I don't think I was successful. And so then it was like, I think yeah. I just wrote it off. I, I had no thought, idea. <laughs> at first, when I started, when I first played that, I thought it was, it was spooky. Because I was younger. I was like, I don't remember how old I, I don't know. I was, I was probably a teenager. But yeah. I thought it was spooky because the way that Romani describes them as them. And I'm like, there's right. some aliens about to come up in here. <laughs> like, what are these people doing? And then it's just like literally like pose with the lanterns just trying to. I mean, they kind of look like aliens, if I remember yeah, correctly. They, right? they, they have, have this, like the downward light thing. Exactly. Even when Krem, when uh, when Romani is being abducted, she's just going up in the light. And it's just like, this is some weird stuff happening in this <laughs> game right now. <laughs> No, I wasn't see. Majora's Mask? Weren't they thinking about making it aliens, or am I thinking about Breath later? of the Wild? Breath almost of the had Wild. an alien okay. sub or alien plot. Yeah, kind of glad they didn't do that. I think I'm okay with that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same. same. Yeah. But I, think like, we all I, I feel like yeah, I feel like this and Majora's Mask is as close as they should get to it. <laughs> I so so Majora's Mask was IG Numa's first uh, game that he directed on his not on his own but as the lead. Gotcha. Um, and so. That was, and he's of course the one that is basically the lead now. He mm-hmm. took on Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, a bit of Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword is a mixed group, and then Breath of the Wild is pretty much kind of all him. So I think seeing some, maybe some of those concepts of like, I could imagine there was a meeting five years ago of like, what should we do with Breath of the Wild? And we all know that with Breath of the Wild, they were trying to break conventions. They were trying to make it as weird as possible. There were versions with Link with a guitar and Link with a motorcycle and all these like they just oh, they yeah. were just like let's put all the ideas out there and then That's find really out where the good ones are. You know. So maybe that's where the aliens thing came from. There's a similar thread there. Mm-hmm. But anyway, wow. Yeah. One of the things that I love the most about IG and Numa's input into the Zelda games are these really... I think he's... I think... <laughs> I'm going to speak personally. I think Miyamoto is a master. Um, I think IG and Numa is an artist. You know what I mean? Yes. He really brings some interesting things and beautiful things to these games. So, Nick, what is your second? Because we'll go to break after How this. How do I follow up with that? It's a go- <laughs> Alyssa's got good ones, I gotta say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would actually say Navi's fate. Because it's left up in the air Let's whether or not she left because of unrequited love or if she died. She fulfilled her mission. So she, the last we see of her is her flying to the window, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. In, at the end of Ocarina? Well, yes. into the light, too. Mm. So um, I wasn't a person who necessarily hated Navi. I was nope. actually a fan of Navi. Yeah. And I feel like the later games that I played without Navi, 
<laughs> it's just like, okay, I miss that annoying voice. Yeah. That, hey, listen. Hey, listen. Yeah, yeah, she guides you. She guides you well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I feel like there's there's something missing with that. But I think the concept of Navi fulfilling a mission, and then once that mission's fulfilled, she just disintegrates. I think that's incredibly heartbreaking. I see that. Mm-hmm. And I wonder how... I wonder how she came to be because she was definitely assigned to Link, which supports this mission idea. Well, there is a theory out there um, oh. that the Deku Tree actually created her okay. to fulfill that mission. And once bottled fairies, they fulfill her, their mission, they disintegrate. Like, Oh my God, does that mean that every time you use a fairy, it disintegrates? Yep. You're killing that fairy for your for your life. Yeah, um, but and and I think I think she just leaves. I don't think she disintegrates. I think she leaves because I think in for Majora's Mask, Link's on his way looking for her, and that's how he ends up in the parallel universe of Termina. You're absolutely right. He's looking for her, he's looking but he's for her. aimlessly looking for aimlessly. her. He has that is no true. idea. That is so she true. could disappear, and he's You're, just you know what? Yeah, that's that is true. He's aimlessly looking for her. Man, that's even more sad. <laughs> <laughs> that is is really sad if she just like disintegrated oh my heart <laughs> so if we follow the ganondorf timelines correctly basically mm-hmm. adult link from ocarina goes back to the being a kid link verbally warns the family and so then that's how they uh deal with actual ganondorf which creates one of the other timelines blah 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 yes but then he heads out mm, yes because he already knows that he doesn't need to be there seven years later because they took care of ganondorf when he's a kid that's true so that's what leads him into Majora's Mask. And he's aimlessly looking for his one little partner. Oh, man, that's sad. And um, I was actually doing research last mm. night, and there was a video that said that um, the theory is is that she left so that she wouldn't have to tell Link that she's going to die. Oh, oh. I, I mean, I'm into it. Darn. <laughs> yeah. Darn. So, yeah, I'm just going to go now. Mm-hmm. She's forever with me right here, though. Right on my wrist. <laughs> Yeah, you've got Navi, <laughs> Navi right there on, yes. your, on your wrist. Navi is always going to be my like one of my favorite sidekicks. Story-wise, I'm into Navi big time. Yeah, okay, yes. fine. Maybe they could have recorded a couple extra sound bites, yeah. mechanically <laughs> speaking. This is true. But I was always a big fan. I just recently, finally, got a 3DS about a month or two ago. Nice. It's, I know, because we got we to gotta play A Link Between Worlds and all that. You know, it's like we have mm. things to do. But I couldn't help it. Of course, I picked up Ocarina and Majora's Mask as well to play it. And so I'm... Truth is, right now, as we record this, I'm actually trying to get done, finished with my Beyond Good and Evil playthrough for our upcoming episode. Cool. But um, I can't help that, like, at night for five, ten minutes, I go into Ocarina 3D. And Navi's even more special in that thing because every single one of her little sparkles are, like, they're flying yeah. at the screen. And yeah. it's, she's so much more magical than just, like, a glowing white dot. She's so present, yeah. Just aesthetically. Yeah, 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 right. Yes, so present. Because mm-hmm. in a non, the non, I do play it with the 3D on. I do actually like the 3D on personally. I think there's some games maybe I'd turn it off, but for this one I like it. And every time she's flying around or she flies out to a thing and back and she leaves the little particle effects, I was really impressed with that. That was the first thing that really struck me playing the 3D version, if I may. I feel like if you're, by saying you're an Avi fan, it's like saying you're a fan of Jar Jar. Like so many people (laughs) just get upset with you about it. I think it's because of the mechanics. They get tired of the fact that every time you start your game back up, she helps you to yeah. tell you where to go mm-hmm. like that was all that was technically good game design at the time yeah. these days we're a little bit you know the gaming just gamers in general even young ones are a little bit more not well spoken but like well known you know mm-hmm. they could they know to push the info button instead of having it immediately yeah, come or to you yeah it gives you the option of yeah. do you need this information or not whereas yeah. in, in Karina it's like she's there she's gonna tell you and she's gonna tell you again and again every yep. time you restart this game the only yeah. time, other time I experienced that was as low and Minish Cap is a little much for my taste but that's because it's a portable game, I think. Did you, uh, did you ever see the real engine uh, version I, of Navi? I don't know of Navi of, specifically. I've seen many YouTube videos of Unreal Engine Unreal renderings engine. Yeah. Mm. of Ocarina. But I don't know if I've seen one specifically with Navi. I need, in it. I need a Zelda game in my life like that. Yeah. I just, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is gorgeous. The Unreal Engine <laughs> renderings is pretty great. Um, which engine did they use for the physics engine in Breath of the Wild is not. That was, it's like the Unity engine or something. It's, or maybe it's the, 
It's a common physics engine that they used in Breath of the Wild, by the way. They, they outsourced that one. They bought the physics engine instead of building it ground up, which usually Nintendo builds ground up. Just thought that'd be an interesting thing. I wonder if that had anything to do with the monolith thing, because monolith helped them build a lot of the land. Oh, And so monolith true. might have been like, we're good. We use this engine all the time. <laughs> Trust us. Maybe, maybe. I'm just speculating. But I'm also accidentally having a different episode. Um, oh, yeah. Let's go to break. Let's go to break, and we're going to come back with our top three, I guess, and then we'll go through listener feedback and maybe some honorable mentions. Sound good? Right. Sounds I'll, good. I'll see you guys in just a minute. Okay, dokie. <laughs> Hey everybody, David here. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the updates we have on our Patreon page. Now, as some of you know, we do have our three tiers, the sword tier, the white sword tier, and the magical sword tier. And we've been getting some really tremendous support over on Patreon. It's it's truly amazing. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of our new rewards. So for starters, we've decided to add the wallpaper reward to our sword tier. This means that anyone who is a supporter on Patreon will get a special thank you on our website and they'll also receive the ability to download wallpapers once a month from our Patreon page. Now I make these wallpapers myself and it's a lot of fun. They come in a variation of screen sizes. I also make a phone version and an iPad version. I even make an Apple Watch version which is kind of fun. Next we have our white sword tier and that's staying pretty much the same. What the white sword level will give you is early access to each of our episodes. Typically it's about a week before. Um, Also advertisement free versions of those episodes and I record a little patreon specific intro before each one just a touch of behind the scenes before we get into the episodes also of course on the white sword tier we have our bonus content which we release just little mini episodes every oh i don't know every three or four normal episodes we put a little mini episode in there that will also be available on the private rss link that you'll receive by becoming a white sword member and lastly this is the big one our magical sword tier kate and i have decided to bring a camera with us into the studio you could say every single episode going forward after episode 17 of season 2. So we just kind of set this camera up and we say a little quick intro to our Magical Sword patrons and we let them be there with us, so to speak, while we record the episode. I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to give our Magical Sword supporters something really special and I think this is a great way to do it. Okay, so that's it. You can go to patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find links on our website to our Patreon page. We're so grateful for the support we've received already and um Um, If you are interested in any of these rewards at all, please go check us out. And we are back. Boy, that was a fun little break. That was a real break that we just had. We researched timelines. We spoke about cicadas, which was very exciting. (laughs) We spoke about the Zelda manga. Yeah, I feel like maybe there needs to be an episode about that. Definitely, that might be a season should. three thing because Kate and I, or maybe some others, we'd have to like read them and maybe do a roundtable thing. I don't know, that'd be cool. Anyways, 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 <laughs> let's have a show, not a meeting. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll go next with my final, final emotional moment that I put on my list here. Then we'll go to Alyssa and then Nick, and then we have ton. We even got a little bit more listener feedback while we've been recording, so we'll just quick hit. I'm gonna see if we can just quick hit all of them. Nice. Let's go right up the list here. I literally have it up on the monitor. I brought it up mm-hmm. over break. And we'll see. And then maybe if there's one that really sticks out, we could pick that as our 10th and then I'll make the list and put it on the website or whatever. Great. Right. Okay. So my final, my most emotional. Now, I think there are more heartbreaking moments. I mean, you talking about the sisters just, that almost that almost mm-hmm. got me while we were recording, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope it, you know, it's, and I know we're not trying to go for the most gut-wrenching, but an, an, for me... Um, one thing that I was really pleased about in Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. so it is a Breath of the Wild pick here. I went Ocarina Skyward Breath. Mm-hmm. I was very, very pleased. It's not perfect, but I was very pleased with Zelda's journey in Breath of the Wild. Oh. Um, I know that some people say, well, she's technically still just trapped in the castle. I get it. Some people say she's not technically empowered. I get it. But not looking at it as male, female, or otherwise, but looking at it as a person who needs to realize their potential and and they're being told they have to do something and they don't know how to access that. And I love um, how she starts to get nerdy about it and starts to investigate technology to see if she can do it. Like that, the scene, so I will, I'll be specific. The, uh, the scene where she has a little bit of conflict with her father and they're testing out the, the robots, I'll just say. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's one of my favorite cutscenes in the whole game because it spoke to me personally a little bit. Like I'm not, I'm not a princess, but just that idea of 
maybe feeling you need to do something in life and you don't know how to do that, but you can do other things. And I love that she was trying to find alternatives or she was curious. And I don't even know if she wanted to do the things she had to do, to be honest, you know, uh, finding her power or whatever. And also then there's these kind of conflict of like, should she just have faith because she's being told she needs it? Um, or should she find solutions? Should she practice harder? It's kind of the idea. It's the overall theme for me that I think Zelda wrestles with in Breath of the Wild, albeit completely in flashbacks. I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for her to be an active character in Breath of the Wild too. Can't yes. wait. Mm -hmm. So, But the, the flashback story of her journey, for me, I was really um, kind of touched by it. My cat's going crazy right now. He's just running <laughs> up and down the apartment. He's, oh, he's never usually on the show. There we go. It's usually Kate's cat. Oh my gosh, he's really going for it. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, uh, um, the feeling of the feeling of failure, the feeling of not knowing how to do it. I mean, she ultimately succeeds. I think a lot of people point to the scene where she talks about how she failed everyone and she's crying in the rain and she finally embraces Link. That's a very great, that's a very emotional scene. I think it's wonderful. But for me, the theme of it all happens with that other cut scene where she's with her dad. I forget exactly which memory it is. But I love this idea of whenever any human, any person has to fix something about themselves or find something about themselves. Like there's, there's um, let's even just do, let's, okay, I don't want to get like too weird or too deep here, but um, if someone is dealing with something psychologically, they can choose to deal with it maybe by finding a solution with medication or they can find a solution with therapy. And those are two vastly different ways to deal with those things. One, both different ways work for different people in, in a lot of different ways. I think like the technology that Zelda's looking for is a metaphor for medication. I think her trying to find it actually inside herself is a metaphor for therapy. I don't, I don't want to pull too much out of this, but those themes, mm -hmm. they certainly haven't done that in a Zelda game yet, or at least with Zelda. I was very touched by that. I was really excited that she was significantly more dynamic than just, I'm a failed superhero. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I don't know. I liked it. I know I kind of went on a thing there, but no, it's okay. How do you guys feel about I Zelda in Breath of the Wild? I well, since I haven't played through it, oh. I kind of. Oh no! Did um, I just? No, you're fine. I've I've watched. I've I've seen enough. Where oh. I I know where it goes. I know a lot of the, the storylines and stuff. Yeah. So I really enjoyed you talking about that because it makes me more excited to play it all the way through yes. to get to you know see all that and experience like what she's going through and her turmoil turmoil and all that. So. S Story wise, mm -hmm. she's more the main character than Link is, as far as change I'm and growth. Yeah, you know I'm what excited I mean? about that. Yeah, and then you kind of the gameplay becomes your personal story. Mm -hmm. You build your own story with the gameplay, but the story that's embedded there is, is definitely hers, mm -hmm. which I enjoy. Um, how do you feel about Zelda in Breath of the Wild? I mean, you, we did joke about how she's yeah. a little catty in some scenes early on, and I, that's completely true. It's part of her journey. Um, personally, I, in in the earlier memories, I considered her a brat. Yeah. Because it's just like, I don't need a, uh, what, what did she call Link? Uh, you know, like, I don't know, a person to watch me. Yeah. And you know. Th that really bothered me because it's just like, he's the same age as you. Yeah. And he saved you once already. Yeah. So. There's. um Have some gratitude. Well, there's, there's, <laughs> when you read, when you go into, I did read through her diaries and you can also read the King's diaries and. You can find there's there's interesting things that both characters will talk about things that she did. Like she'll go to the spring to pray and try to find her power, we'll just say. Um, and she'll write it in the context in her diary. It'll be like, father scolded me today because I couldn't find blah, blah, blah. But then when you go read the dad's diary somewhere else in the castle, whatever, um, it's like I feel my heart's breaking for her. I have to push her, though, because we need it. And it gets really interesting, that kind of pressure. And so I think some of... Zelda's there's a moment in one of the cutscenes where she says something to, to Link about like every time I look at you it reminds me of my failures and it's because he's kind of just like yo good with a sword and he kind of found his thing he's a he's a good knight he's a mm -hmm. good protector and it kind of just happened I mean I guess he trained but he didn't have a, as much of a journey and I think that every time she sees that in him I think that's why she gets bratty with him in yeah. the beginning you know what i mean because she hasn't found hers yet yeah she hasn't found her niche mm -hmm. well i mean in all the past games it was mainly well not all the past games but past games it was magic she was more magic based yeah mm -hmm. um whereas this game it's like she's not really good with magic so she's kind of looking yeah. for the easy route out which is technology yeah and i love the analogy that you had about like technology being medicine it's like people who struggle with anxiety yep you'll have doctors that tell you 
do cardio and other ones will just prescribe you medicine. Indeed. Um, now I think her, uh, what you were saying, um, about her father, the King, yeah. uh, constantly just writing her about it. Now I think that's incredibly heartbreaking as well because it's just like, I think we've all like for me myself, like I've always yeah. wanted to make my parents proud without them. Like, I guess I hear you not really being having like that situation where they're constantly writing me to do better, mm -hmm. do better. But it's always me constantly pushing myself. Um, yeah. My parents thought I was going to play sports when I was a kid. I was, I was a big, <laughs> tall, enormous baby in the, in the hospital and slowly, but I mean, there's literally pictures of like footballs and basketballs in my crib <laughs> and slowly, but surely they had to realize that I was going to be more of an artist than a, a sports <laughs> person, <laughs> an athlete. That's what they call them. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's an interesting, you know, when you're a teenager, that's a complicated, I feel much love from my parents these days and yeah. I always have technically, but it's complicated when you, uh, I struggle with, uh, I'm very dyslexic and I also was diagnosed with ADHD when I was a kid and blah, blah, blah. I don't really talk about it too much, but mm -hmm. there are times where you feel so smart and there are times where you feel so dumb and you can't change it. Yeah. And so, so we did, there were actually, I guess this is getting pretty real. There were times in my life where we tried medication and it would work until I'd run out of medication. And then you didn't, you weren't, I wasn't strong enough. Then I would try to do things with therapy or uh, try to build the right you, you know, and uh, then you still struggle with that sometimes. But, um, so you were speaking to like living up to your parents. I think that can be, and then from, from, he, I actually thought the King, I wasn't into him in Breath Neither of the Wild I. until I found that diary entry. And then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. He's, he's doing this because he has to. And it's almost the parent saying, you have to get good grades. And the kid's saying, but why? And, or, or, or you go, or everyone's going to die if you don't get good grades. Yeah. I mean, imagine the pressure. <laughs> oh, boy. Right? That's pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I kind of ac accidentally grabbed that story from you a little bit by accident. So you were speaking to how it, how it feels for you sometimes. Um, I... Yeah, I know. I, I, we, totally, we, uh, we, I totally hijacked your story. Okay. Oh, so no. sorry. It just went with, with the flow. It oh, no. It just went through. Oh, no. Um, oh, about the king. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we've all had those moments in our lives where it's not so much, well, for me, it wasn't like my parent or I, one of my parents writing me about something to yeah. do better because I was always a good student. Um, I always pushed myself harder than my parents would ever dream of pushing me. Okay. Um, I was a little bit of an overachiever. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, little short story about me. Um, I was one grade from being on the honor roll. I got a B. Oh. I saw it almost all straight A's. I showed it to my mom in tears. Oh man. And I was just like, why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> these are fine. <laughs> like these grades are amazing. I was just like, I wanted to be on the honor roll. Yeah, you are kind of a driven person though. Yeah. I've only known you for a couple months, but. Yeah, uh, well, I, I mean, well, speaking of, like on the game too, like yeah. if you don't put your mind like 100% into something or like all of your time and effort with a little bit of like balance in your life to where you have breaks, yeah. you're going to burn yourself out mm -hmm. and or just look for the easy route. I mean, uh, it just that's the way our society is nowadays in my eyes. It's like we always look for the easy route out of doing something. Yeah, sometimes. It's like, it's candy tastes better than vegetables, but yeah. candy only gives you energy for so long. Uh, I can... You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I guess, yeah, it is a little bit. We, we, that is a bit of a, like an people, issue. When people find out, like, I used to be 210 pounds, they're just like, how did you do it? I, I just said, found that out now. I had no idea. Holy smokes. I, I used to be 210 pounds. We have pounds. a svelte gentleman in front of us right <laughs> yes. now. Yes. <laughs> um, I just, simple, I just cut out the sweets. Yeah. Cut out the bread, all the bad carbs. Mm -hmm. I just completely cut it all out. And so you did it, it all, as lifestyle. Yeah. Like and I guess you could have done a, a surgical option or wow. something, but you did lifestyle. Yeah. And I also started working out. I was doing P90X every single morning. You I see. only throw up the first time. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, doing wow, fasted that. cardio. I see. Well, any, but this is, this is, I'm learning about you guys. We're starting to just hang out here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so perhaps. <laughs> Alyssa, I apologize that you can't speak to this as much <laughs> because fine. of the storyline. No, I, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm a great listener. This is great. But Nick, <laughs> would you agree? I, sometimes people are comfortable and sometimes people are uncomfortable with Zelda's. I've heard crass or quick statements about like, oh, they, oh, they finally make the main character and guess what? She just fails. And it's like, no, 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 no. I don't think that's what's going on here at all. You know what I mean? Well, this is a person finding what they need to do. And I think that's incredibly interesting. And, and she does find it, you know? 
Well, we all have to fail in order to succeed. There is that. You know, and she... True. Oh, you know what? I actually haven't fully beaten the game yet because I'm still trying to drag it on. Yeah. So it has some longevity. <laughs> she finds it. Mm-hmm. Um, but she does defeat Calamity again. She's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of an ocarina parallel in that it's like Link swords it up and then she magics it up. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, she, she finds it. She assists as she does, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. so technically she saves the day. Uh, well, I, she's I, the one that seals the deal. I she, understand. She, she 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 tightens up that Ziploc bag. You know, <laughs> she's the one. That, but I can completely understand why people are upset. You know, like they want more out of her yeah. just being the princess, the damsel in distress. Well, and to that, I think Breath of the Wild Two, it appears, is going to have a very nice story of the two of them together, and I can't wait for that. Oh, that'd be awesome you know? if like you mm-hmm. can go in between each character too. So I, I agree. I agree completely. I agree. Uh, let's keep moving because this is going to accidentally be a three-hour episode now that we're getting uh, all personal. Right. Alyssa, yes. what's your final? My final is uh, literally the a Link to the Past storyline, which is my favorite Zelda game. That's so I, this is my game. I didn't finish. <laughs> now I get to learn from you. Yes. So in A Link to the Past, it's basically if Ocarina of Time, if Link and Zelda fail and Ganon gets hold of the Triforce, uh, Zelda has to take the sages and seal Ganon away to the um, sacred realm, which becomes the dark world in A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past is the next game after Failed Hero Timeline? Yes. Cool. Failed Hero cool, cool. Timeline. Yes. So basically in A Link to the Past, um, years pass, mm-hmm. and that's where, um, what's it called? The imprisoning war while that happens, where they're still f- fighting b- to keep peace in Hyrule, basically. But years pass, and you know, it's I don't know how how many years pass, but basically, it's probably a hundred years. Probably, it's usually a hundred years. Usually a hundred years. I'm just yeah. Um, so basically, this random dark priest, Aganim, all right, decides to I want to open the dark realm, which is now the dark the dark world. The sacred realm becomes a dark world yep. because of Ganon's evil just seeping out. Oh, that's cool. That's a little bit of a retroactive fix too. Yeah, basically. So like the two worlds that Link goes through is basically just the dark seeping from Ganon and Hyrule, which is just just he's just trying to save. Yep. So um. Basically, Aghanim decides to sacrifice. They say sacrifice the basically the state the the basically the future sages. They have the blood of the sages. So this like ladies. He basically goes around taking ladies. Like you have blood of a sage. I'm going to sacrifice you. Which basically throwing them into the dark realm. Aghanim's doing that. Aghanim, yeah. yeah. Okay. So once he gets to Zelda, and Zelda, you know, telepathically says, "Yo, Link, help me." <laughs> and Link and his uncle, well, his uncle. Ends up going to the castle first and ends up getting, you know, taken yeah. down by the guards and gives Link his sword. It's like, it's your your turn, dude. I know. It's, it's such an turn. emotional moment. I love that little moment. And then it's, then yes. unfortunately, it has the da 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 part yeah. because he gets his sword. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like, yo, I, oh yeah, first, I, Aghanim kill, kills the king yeah. oh, and then kills yes. his uncle. Well, basically, the guards kill his uncle. But Link's like, yo, I got a sword now. Yeah. Yeah, it is a little <laughs> odd. Yay! It's a video game moment. But, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, seeing that little sprite laying there. Ooh. Yes. Uh, where was I? <laughs> okay, so Link goes and rescues Zelda. And Zelda's like, yo, you need, a, you need to go get more equipment. While he's out getting what he needs to get to get to the dark world and help defeat Aghanim yeah. plus Ganon, she gets herself captured again and gets thrown in and the portal opens. So Hyrule is like, oh, smokes, the dark <laughs> side's coming out and we need to we need to save it because, you know, Zelda couldn't stay where he told her to tell to stay. You know, yeah, yeah. Zelda's a troublemaker, basically. Whoa. <laughs> She's a big of a troublemaker. Um, so then Link has to go back and forth saving the sages um to help she, he needs basically the stages to help bring down the dark tower to get in to defeat ganon because if ganon comes out in his true form where he looks like a boar it's just yep. like one of my favorite ganons because he's 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 just a dark d- demonic thing and he has like a trident and yeah. he looks like a boar on steroids yes. which is like so he link saves the stages to help open or well, kill agonim open up the tower and gets in there and fights Ganon on his own without Zelda's help, which is like one of those things that's like he does it purely on his own. Mm-hmm. 
And it's it's the Ganon that I love to see where he's just like, and if someone in the, I wish I brought the book, but then the artist. He's blue, isn't he? He's blue. He's big. He's gigantic. Yeah. He has a trident. He's just menacing, mm -hmm. you know? And then at, at the end, he truly gets defeated by Link, which is like, finally done. Ganon is out. So Link to the Past, I grew up, that's the one game that I fell in love with, played more than even Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Why? Because I like the whole going back and forth between the dark world, the dark realm yeah. and the regular realm. I, again, I just really like the flow of the whole game. And that's the Ganon from Ocarina then, of course. Yeah. So Ganondorf, once he gets the Triforce, becomes just Ganon, where it's like, he's yep. demonic. Yep. There's a whole word for it. What is he? <laughs> I forget. And then A Link to the Past leads mm -hmm. into, is it Zelda 1 and 2 after that? You've got the timeline there in your Hyrule story. <laughs> Zelda 1. A Link to the Past, uh, Oracle of Ages. Well, the Ages are after that, or the Oracle games. Yeah, the Oracle games, then Link, Link's Awakening. Whoa, this is a long thread. Yeah, it's it goes, yeah. Interesting. I actually really like a lot of the games in that timeline. I never yeah, realized. Yeah, they're very popular. Here, you can take a look. <laughs> well, certainly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's one of those where I like I like how it went how they went in with like in Ocarina of Time. I learned that oh, that's how Ganon gets. I I played Link to the Past first, obviously, and then I played yeah, Ocarina yeah. of Time, and I'm like, okay, so this is where they fail, and this is how Ganon gets trapped in the sacred realm and poisons it, so it becomes the dark world. I get it now. Like that was nice to learn. Meanwhile, as I played. on land or whatever, it's those imprisoned wars that we were looking at over the break. The imprisoned world, yeah, the imprisoned world, which they really don't go into a lot. Which would be really nice if they did. I agree. We some of this we well, we were hinting we have a listener feedback about that. Yeah, which in we'll a get to bit, in a minute for sure. Yeah, so that was link to the past. Most emotional. Yeah, that's my because I, like I just remember. <laughs> getting angry at the game, loving it. I remember the just as a kid, just enjoying it. It's just like that nostalgic feeling I get from the game. So that's like my number one. I do think that I've said this in the past. Mm -hmm. Something that's hard for me to appreciate now that I have to remember is that I do think that when that game came out, very similar to like Super Metroid or something, there mm -hmm. was a couple games there on the Super Nintendo. When they came out, that was definitely the next level of of mm -hmm. of like. I almost said inclusive gaming, but what I meant mm -hmm. to say was, you know, where, where you go into the game. The graphics were finally yeah. good enough past the Nintendo game, mm -hmm. where I think it was probably really captivating and emotional yeah. to be in that game. And it game. still has those those classic Link moments of if you attack a cuckoo, all the cuckoos come get you <laughs> and stuff like that. It has all the all the different races and it's just, it has everything I love in a Zelda game. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's great. So I've essentially picked Breath of the Wild storyline. You've essentially picked Link to the Link Past to the story. Past. Yeah. So Nick. <laughs> Senor. Here we go. What do you have? As your as your final, to piggyback off of her, Ooh. I actually just wrote down Breath of the Wild. <laughs> okay, um, okay. For the simple fact that first off, it is a gorgeous game. Okay, uh, it's just beautiful just to roam around. But there's times where it's extremely bleak. Yeah. All of a sudden, you walk up and it says Lon Lon Ranch, and there's nothing there. Well, that's a good point. Or you oh. go into the Temple of Time, and half of it's demolished. I, oh, I never thought about this. You're absolutely right. And it's, it's certain little moments, like from other games you go to, and it's just like, oh, this. It's nostalgia, but it's horrific too, yeah. or at least tragic. Tragic, yeah. Um, now, just the storyline in general. Uh, uh, first off, you failed, and then you. I don't know if you die and then you get resurrected. It is the resurrection Link, chamber. Link perishes in mm -hmm. the pre-story. Yeah, and then you come back a mm -hmm. hundred years later. Well, or it was—I I think it's one of those technicalities where Link's just about to get struck. Zelda blocks it, mm -hmm. which puts which sacrifices her status into being trapped in the castle, and then he's you know put into that resurrection thing. I think mm -hmm. it's something like that. It's hard. It's been a while actually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, all the champions die, just like all the sages die. There's a lot of parallels from other games. There's a lot of emotional moments with those champions, actually. When they are mm -hmm. re-seeing some of their family members, the Daruk one, I remember, I was actually kind of touched by. Um, what was the... Uh, not the Zora. Um, the Rito? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Him. Yeah, I Rivaldi. Think, uh, Rivaldi's Rivaldi. Gale, something like that. He was the only Rivaldi. one I was just like... I'm kind of glad you died. He was a bit of a, he had a personality, let's yeah. just say. He had a personality that, that did not impress me. I hear, I hear a lot about him, yeah. yeah. I, hear. Um, I mean, I get what they were going for. They were going for like a cocky guy, but it was, it's broad strokes, and so it's a little annoying. But 
I think also one of the things that really is emotional about it is mm. all the timelines. This is the end of each timeline. So yes. they all end up being in this place. And it's, I, what do you call that? A paradox? It might be a paradox. I'm at peace with it. I'm yeah. okay with it. If it might get, be a paradox in that it can't actually technically happen, but. Well, now they don't have to worry about where each game fits in the timeline because now it all takes place after Breath of the Wild. So I feel Presumably, like that yeah. Certainly was, Breath of the Wild 2 will happen after right. Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. whatever game comes after that, it'll be after Breath of the Wild 2. I would assume. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I'd hope. <laughs> I don't know. Because then like when they made Skyward Sword, you know? Yeah. And they well, went way back up to the top. But anyway. I kind of like that, though, that they I'm do okay that. I'm with it. Um, mm-hmm. But all in all, I feel like this game is... Oh, especially when you get the Master Sword. That was another emotional moment. Yeah. Because the Master Sword's all rusty. Um... And then the they, first Master Sword moment is in A Link to the Past. Yep. Yes, song. it is. But yeah, that's <laughs> all just I say all Breath of the Wild. I do like that. I think there's times where I feel emotions just walking around in Breath of the Wild. Just the fact that you have to walk through a grassy field for longer than you want to. It's like being out in the real yeah. world. I love to hike and go camping. And so mm-hmm. I really like Breath of the Wild a lot for those reasons. There's every time you go on a hike when you're out in the wilderness for 70% of it, it's beautiful and amazing. And then for 30% of it, you're just like, oh, I got to get past this field. <laughs> you know, the sun's too hot in this section of the forest. Oh my God. I'm running out of stamina. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And then, but then in the long run, it all pays off, you know, but there's always moments. And so I like it when sometimes games have those moments where you're like, oh, I just got to get over there. It makes it a little bit more emotional. It gives you highs and lows, you know? And what little bit of music they do have in it too. Yeah. Um, I'm like, a huge fan of music. When you go to Lon Lon Ranch, it's a slow down version of... The, that uh, theme. What's your name? Song. Opponent song. song. Opponent song. Uh, when you go, well, there is no music in the Lost Wood. Uh, I don't think it's the Lost, Lost Wood just has that ding 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 yeah. music. It's kind of a, a stranger version of Saria song. Hmm. Yeah, it might be. Um, oh, yeah, I think it's really slowed down. But anyway, uh, <laughs> same thing with Temple of Time. It's a Temple of Time. Yep, you can hear it there. I feel like the uh, what makes Zelda really Zelda too. It. That sounded weird. Um, Zelda as well. <laughs> yeah, Zelda as well is the music. We're mm-hmm. all familiar with most of the themes. Um, mm-hmm. There's an episode about it. Mm-hmm. Um, Song of Storms, Saria yeah. Song, The Lost Woods. This one didn't really have any music. And I don't think it really needed music, per se. Um, especially when you're walking around, because it's called Breath of the Wild. It's supposed to be quiet. It's about being alone. Yep. And just... Uh, I feel like the enemy's music too, when it comes in, that 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 panic you feel. Yeah. Um, but. The only time you get some classic themes is if you ride your horse during the day for a while. You get um, a little bit of the actual Hyrule Field theme, mm-hmm. or, or maybe the actual Zelda theme. And uh, at night, you get a little bit of Princess Zelda's theme if you ride your horse for a while. It's the only mm-hmm. time like really definitive things come in. Great Fairy mm-hmm. Fountain, you do get a little bit of that. But the, uh, yeah, I'd say that game's... Um, the Great Fairies are creepy, though, in that game. Yeah, I, I'm ready to jump into Breath of the Wild, but also weary because of flashbacks of Ocarina of Time and having to travel so far. <laughs> and having that, yeah, this is nice to travel, but it's like, I need to get somewhere. It's taking too long. Yeah, you can do... You can, In Breath of the Wild, You're in, every time you find a shrine, you can use it as a teleportation point. So some people can just go beep, 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 beep and pop oh, around. Oh, nice. I mean, I'm kind yeah. of a weirdo. I would like... <laughs> Kate sometimes would roll her eyes at me because I'd turn all my mini maps off. I'd turn all the, like I would, I would not warp at all. I wanted mm-hmm. to play super real. Oh, but you know, that sometimes it's nice. Sometimes you just, you just want to go. So I don't mind if I sit down for 20 minutes and it's just going to the place I need, but that's mm-hmm. just me being me. But that's what's so beautiful about that game is you can play it so many different ways, you know? I think it's a great pick. I think we should get to our listener feedback then. Sound good? Let me move my mic here. We might get a weird noise. I'm just (laughs) going straight over to the monitor. All right. So a couple hours ago, I tweeted out, uh, basically, I said, like, hey, we're doing a... We're doing an emotional moment storyline episode. It could be anything. It could be NPCs. It could be games. And this is some of this I haven't even read yet, but some of this I did get to check. So first of all, Mallory Mallory Kuhn, who she and her husband Ryan Kuhn are kind of new listeners, and they're big supporters. They've been giving us a ton of listener feedback. Ooh, they're nice. awesome. So awesome. I was really pleased. Uh, she tweeted. She's um, at MJ underscore Kuhn K U H N. Um, she says, Midna and Link's growing friendship and heartbreaking farewell in Twilight Princess. The path to the Twilight is destroyed at the end, so you know it's goodbye forever, which is a real punch to the gut. 
Yeah, I think their growing friendship is emotional. I, yes. think, I really like how Minna grows over the course of that game. Yeah, I'm sassy little Minna, yeah. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Sassy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. But uh, I think that moment when Zelda saves her is when she gets it. That's when she clicks over to it. It's, it's yeah. more real. Uh, okay, Leon, who goes by uh, Leon Atrios, L-E-O-N-A-T-O-R-I-U-S, said, I always found the story of the Zoras in Twilight Princess to be pretty sad and emotional. The prince, still a child, and he already has to cope with the fact that his mother was executed. All the Zora are still in shock, and now he has to be their king and lead them. 100%. Yes. That's um, the responsibility upon a child, and they oof. all know it. Oof. Yeah, and he's sick. You find him in the, mm-hmm. in the thing. They bring him back. It's fine, but to know that your parent didn't just die but was executed, you have to take all this Ooh. responsibility on. Hopefully, that's, that's a very mature individual. Uh, Ryan, Mallory's husband, here says, an obvious one, but the long goodbye with Link and Saria in Ocarina of Time. Mm-hmm. There it is. Because you see the sadness in the 90s polygon graphics <laughs> on Saria's face, it makes you wonder if Ganondorf never started anything, how they would have ended. Fair enough. Yes, love Saria. 100% they would have just mm-hmm. been in the a relationship. End of the game when you find out she's no longer there. Yeah. Yeah, right. Because you know, being a sage is complete. That's what you are. Yeah, they really dart around it in Ocarina of Time, but mm-hmm. I do subscribe to the idea that all the sages perish, and that's yeah. how they become. They sages. they have to become the they have to become the thing to help the sacred realm. Yep. Be you know it's true. sealed. Uh, DMC Gar, who goes by at Mick Gar mentions, said uh, the Keaton mask storyline in Majora's Mask. The Keaton mask in Majora's Mask. Mike. I remember the Keaton mask in Ocarina. Keaton mask. I- I I still, you know, I still the fox looking face. The fox looking face. I don't remember its storyline in Majora. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, that's a, it, we'll have to follow mm-hmm. up on that one. Uh, oh, here we go. Jack Bro, uh, Bra, who goes by <laughs> Geek Bro 27. Uh, he said, Link's grandma in the Wind Waker. Ooh, Alyssa just put her hands yeah, up. Yeah, I had that on because I made my own little top 10. I had that as one of them because you, you leave poor grandma behind. And then when you go visit her, she's literally tired, like worried she's like, sick. sick. She's sick. literally she's worried, worried sick. sick. And you have to give her a fairy to kind of waken her up. And she, she gives you the soup that she makes that's really good for health and magic or whatever. But it's like she literally gets worried sick for, for Link and his sister. And just like it's just laying there there with her blanket is just like shivering and muttering to herself you can give her a fairy yeah i always just went up and read her being sick and tired and felt horrible and walked away oh my god (laughs) i was like oh my gosh grandma we got to finish this game up you got to get back to you is what i always thought you can give her a fairy yes you have to give her a fairy so she can give you the milk Uh, not the milk the the soup she gives you her special soup Uh, oh maybe 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 it did do i don't know (laughs) interesting interesting okay um, mm-hmm. Well, okay, then he says, Link's grandma in The Wind Waker. She has both of her grandkids go away so quickly, and then she becomes ill. Poor sick grandma needs a fairy. Uh-huh, he knows. Uh-huh. Fairy, yep. <laughs> Alex, who goes by Alex is not at home. Oh, we've heard from him before. Uh, he said, almost every side quest in Majora's Mask. Uh, that was utterly tragic. Also, the old Zoras with Mifa gave me feels. Oh, mm-hmm. how the older Zoras in Breath of the Wild would remember Mifa. Oh, Yeah. And how they wouldn't, mm-hmm. they kind of, remember they almost blamed Link because yep. Mifa gave herself by trying to protect. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> I blame Link too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russell Warfeld, Warfield, who goes by at Russell Warfield, uh, says, there's loads I haven't played, but the realization of the true nature of Cohoylent Island in Link's Awakening surely deserves a mention for being the first real dose of mel- mel- melancholic storytelling in the series. Fair enough. Fair enough, that one hit deep. That was my first Zelda game that I ever played. So I thought they all were going to have these wacky, weird, existential crises. You oh, know, well. if you win the game, mm-hmm. you're destroying the thing that you're of the dream you're in because it all exists as a dream. That yeah. is a, uh, a logistical technicality. That was your first Zelda game, you yeah, said? Link to the Past. <laughs> nice. It was, I was Zelda curious as a kid, kid pardon me. Uh-huh. Um, but I played a little bit of Final Fantasy. And I remember finally, mm-hmm. like for Christmas, I asked for a Zelda game, but I. Knew that asking for like a, a full Zelda game would have been too expensive to ask for. So I asked Weeks. for the Game Boy version uh, and I loved Weeks it. Weeks. Which is just as long. It's a great game. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic game. I still, I've, I still have the original cartridge. I cherish it. I play it all the time. Um, 
Oh, oh, here's another Wind Waker. Yeah. So Ruben, who goes by at Fuzzy Pickles underscore, <laughs> said Ruben. definitely the whole plot in rescuing little Errol in Wind Waker from the traumatic kidnapping of her on a normal and beautiful day on Outset to almost rescuing her on Forsaken Fortress the first time around. Love the whole journey. And man, sad grandma scene always gets me. Sad grandma. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. How do you feel about Errol there, Alyssa? I thought you were breathing in to say something. Errol? Oh, yeah. It's like it's little sister who's done nothing, just hanging out, just gets captured because, mm-hmm. you know, Ganon looking for Zelda as usual. Scooped up by the bird. Uh, <laughs> at Anna Hauser 11 here, who goes by Anna Banana, said, This is one I never hear about. I have a sad fondness of when Link salutes Skulkita in the Ikana Kingdom, granting him permission to die. From what game is that? Wait. Ikana, is that Twilight Princess, maybe? Mm, not familiar with that one. Maybe though. that's Majora's Mask. Oh my gosh, we got to research this one. Anna I Banana, do. we're looking into it. Mm-hmm. I love this next one. This is a funny one. We have mm-hmm. Caleb Webb, who who is a, he's a friend of the show at this point. He's on our Discord. He tweets us all the time. He's a great guy. Uh, he said, Toilet Hand, finally getting his paper. Oh, yes. <laughs> toilet Hand. With the Michael Scott yeah. gif. Of him just yes. being happy. <laughs> toilet oh Hand forever. Oh, oh well, and one more follow-up here, and then and then we're good. Uh, Caleb then said, on a serious note, I've always loved the imprisoning war and felt Nintendo hasn't done well addressing it in the lore. Yeah, that's the imprisoning war tweet that we got. Yeah, basically. And it's the war that ensues because Ganon, because Link fails in Ocarina, and then Ganon takes over. Ganon takes over for a period of time where um, Zelda has to lead the sages and help seal him away in the, in, in the what should we call it, the realm. Um and they don't really touch much on it. They just say that there was there was a war, and there was a battle, and yeah, but, there's a lot of there's of like it. three or four wars and battles that are just kind of put into the timeline. There's the civil, the Hillian civil war. There's the, there's a I think there's a Twilight war, a Twilly war, perhaps. Twilight. I could be mistaken. <laughs> Twilly. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it, right? <laughs> I don't know. Well, those are great. Those are awesome. Uh, any any that sticks out that could be our final one, our tenth. Any that stuck out to you guys? I mean, we did a, the Grandma Wind Waker is what we were affected by the most, I think. However, what else do we have? Wind Waker Grandma for sure. I feel like Link's Grandma has That's, to have at least some spot. <laughs> Saria, mm-hmm. we found the Zoras. Oh, Zora is probably the most tragic. The Zora timeline in Twilight Princess. But uh, I think emotional, if we're going emotional, it's all the emotions. It's grandma. Let's go with grandma from Wind Waker. Grandma from Wind Waker. I, I, Absolutely. I agree. I like it. It's, it's very memorable. A lot of people remember it. A lot of people talk about it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Poor grandma. <laughs> cool. Well, let's wrap this episode up. Sure. Um, I know that the both of you have Instagram accounts and perhaps Twitter accounts. So if you'd like to share any of that, uh, Nick, where if, if you were so inclined to have people follow you on any social media, where could they find you? Um. You can find me either on Facebook or Instagram. Facebook, it's... You've Nicholas. sent us comments before. Have you done it through yeah. Twitter or was it Facebook oh, usually? Uh, I have a Twitter account. I just don't use it. Oh, I'm trying uh, to remember how we usually hear from you. It doesn't matter. Uh, Instagram, it's probably most Instagram likely. Um, or Facebook. Fair enough. Um, uh, you can find me on Facebook at Nicholas Von Frankenstein or my art page. Uh, it's Zamfoti Art, Z-A-M-F-O-T-I. Uh, Instagram, it's Frank N, the letter N, S T three I N. Yes, yes, <laughs> Frankenstein. Yeah, very good, very good. I don't know if I should embarrassingly tell the audience that I've been calling Nick Frank for the past couple months because I thought that was his first name. I feel like that's great. Believe oh, yeah, it or yeah, not, yeah. on Facebook, before they got rid of the middle initial, it yes. was the same way. My first name was Frank, my middle initial was N, and my last name was Stein. I see. Maybe maybe I could use that as an excuse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was old Facebook that I was looking at. I, I still run that old Facebook. Uh, Alyssa, where can people find you if they want uh, to? If you want on Instagram at ZeldaGirl90, I do, but it's open for you guys to follow, and I do post a lot about Zelda stuff. Yeah, still. you just posted something today. You were setting up all your Amiibos and your Zelda stuff. I was fixing up my Zelda shelf because we were re- rearranging the apartment, and oh. it all got tossed aside for a second so I can move furniture, and I, I just love fixing it up and placing things how I like them. So yeah, I, I did just post that, so it's uh, Zelda Girl 90. Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, people can find me personally at Raptor Paint on Instagram and Twitter. If they want to find the show at Another Zelda Pod on Twitter and Another Zelda Podcast on Instagram, of course you can find us on Facebook just by searching Another Zelda Podcast. That also works on YouTube. Or go to our actual website, anotherzeldapodcast.com, where you can find 
all of the episodes that we do and links to our Google Play page and our iTunes page and some other fun stuff that we have on there. Oh, all of our blogs now. We have we have a whole team of people writing blogs. I'm sure as you guys know, just as listeners, mm-hmm. which is a lot of fun. Uh, Celeste is kind of heading that stuff up. We have some live stream content out on our YouTube channel now that we recorded uh, just a few weeks ago at the Video Game Summit 2019 here in Chicago. And that's all I'll say about all of that. Mm-hmm. Another ZeldaPodcast.com. Alyssa and Nick, this was a blast. This is the perfect way to do a filler episode. I had so much fun. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad you invited me. It's great. I like the beans and rice. I, I love it. I love it. It's great. I'm so glad that we didn't we didn't need to skip an episode. And this that so many so many great conversations came out of this one. So I appreciate both of you. I don't know. I, I, listen, you seemed like just a touch nervous when I first asked you. I was like, you want to come on the show? And you were like, oh, oh my okay. God. This is my first time doing anything like this. So yeah, I, I was nervous. I'm still red in the face. But you know what? I did it. I think I did pretty good. So. Yeah, I'm grateful. I'm very grateful to both of you. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. We'll see you around. Thank, thank you. you. Cool.